Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss how over a period of about 24 hours, three Tory MPs were confirmed as criminals. I say three Tory MPs, I mean three more because this seems to be coming a regular occurrence. Two of those MPs are the most senior of all, and that's what I'm going to discuss in this video. Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, and Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, who have been issued with fines over their role in Partygate. And it isn't even over yet. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So there wasn't really any doubt before, but there's none now. We knew that Boris Johnson broke his own COVID laws. I, I'm a strong believer in innocence until proven guilty, but it was blatant. It's a bit like, I'm not medically trained, but if I see someone whose leg is bending back the wrong way with a bone sticking out, I think I can confidently say their leg is broken. There are some things that are so obvious, do you know what? You don't have to be an expert. But innocent until proven guilty. And now both Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak have been found guilty of breaking COVID laws. The same COVID laws that they passed and insisted that the public follow. At the insistence of these two men and others in cabinet, people allowed loved ones to die alone. And it's worth bearing in mind that this was the right thing to do. It's not the people who suffered loss with due regard for the rest of the population who were in the wrong. It was the members of the government and their staff who did wrong by ignoring the rules out of selfish entitlement. And remember that the Met Police have been in the pocket of the Conservatives for some time. They refused to investigate several potential breaches of criminal law where they are concerned, including the role of Boris Johnson and others into the illegal Brexit referendum campaign. But circumstances conspired them to, to investigate. And even then, they could come to no conclusion other than that Boris Johnson is guilty. It was so obvious that there was no way of covering it up. It still blows my mind that it took this long when Sue Gray had already done a great deal of the work for them. And never mind, oh, very complicated. The police were able to issue fines very, very quickly for ordinary members of the public without anything like the level of documented proof. It blew my mind again when I found out that the investigation isn't even done. Not even close. From the reports I've seen, the police have only investigated four out of the 12 parties that were brought to their attention. And after being initially outraged that this mess is being dragged on, I realise it's probably not in Boris Johnson's interest that it's panning out as it is now. See, the thing is, at the moment, the main reasons the Conservatives argue that they shouldn't get... Because it's like it's a bit like, you know, first of all, Boris Johnson denied there were no parties. Oh, well, he said there were no parties. Then it's like, oh, there clearly were parties. It's like, oh, but I didn't know about the parties. Oh, well, he didn't know about the parties. And then it was like... Look, come on, man. And then I've, I've ordered an investigation. Sue Gray's going to... Well, actually, the first person that was going to investigate turned out to be one of the parties themselves. So then it was Sue Gray was going to investigate. We need to wait for the Sue Gray report. Sue Gray report, or, you know, the, the summary, because we can't see the full thing yet, comes out and it's like, this is really bad. Oh, uh, yeah, but there's a police investigation now. We need to wait for the police investigation. The police investigation has concluded that he's a criminal. Ah, uh, yeah, but now Russia's declared war on Ukraine, so, you know, we have to keep him now. It's like, what? Oh, so you'd get rid of him if it weren't for this? Is that what you're saying? Pfft, behave yourself. But what it means is, because it's going to drag itself out, at some point, the Ukraine crisis, it, well, it's not going to be resolved for them for, for decades, but in terms of, you know, our interest in it, it's going to, at some point, resolve. What then? Because this is now going to keep coming up. Consider this, both Rishi Sunak and Boris Johnson are criminals. This isn't criminals in the way that many political opponents will describe them on social media. You're politically emotive people often bandy about words like criminal or traitor without necessarily being all that concerned whether or not it's literally true. They're just words they use. Unfortunately, when you use words too often, they can lose some meaning. But this is official. Sure, it's the police who have determined their guilt, not a court. But as with anyone found guilty of a breach of criminal law in this way, both Sunak and Johnson have the right to challenge the decision in a magistrate's court. They can do that. They've got the right, same as the rest of us. If they think the decision is wrong, that is what they can do. As some have done, some people have successfully challenged their police fine because the police did get it wrong. But Boris Johnson was first to say that he'd paid the fine He's not going to appeal. Why? 
because it would just mean another future date where it is confirmed by a court that he is as guilty as sin. That would raise the stakes even higher. Rishi Sunak has also apologised unreservedly, suggesting that he is not going to challenge it either. So they're both criminals and that is how it's going to remain. Johnson still maintains that he didn't think he was doing anything wrong at the time, but also that he accepts the police decision. He also said he, accept, he, he takes full responsibility, he said. Full responsibility. What exactly does full responsibility mean to this man? If a criminal, upon being found guilty, said, yep, yeah, I accept this result, I did it and I would do it again. Is that taking full responsibility? I know Johnson didn't specifically say he would do it again. But because he maintains that he doesn't understand, even now, he doesn't understand what he did wrong, he is saying that under the same circumstances, he would act in the same way. Of course he would, because he doesn't think he's done anything wrong. That's not taking full responsibility, or even any responsibility. He's trashing his high office and the reputation of the country. I shudder to think how this has been reported around the world. I'd normally take a look. You know, I do take a look at the international media just to see this. I, I, I don't think I want to on this occasion. It'll be embarrassing. He continues to deny that he was aware he did anything wrong. They were his rules. These were not laws imposed on him by others for which you could say, well, oh, I mean, I don't spend my time reading through the laws of the land, do I? That's, that would be for the rest of us. And even that wouldn't work. If you tried, if the police slapped you with a fine, you tried to go to court and argued, well, I don't spend my nights reading through the laws and I didn't really know it changes all the time. I mean, that's as reasonable a defence you can come up with, with still being guilty. The court will say, well, ignorance of the law is no excuse. But he personally approved of these laws. He had them explained to him in detail by officials. He went on the telly on numerous occasions to explain them to the public. How can a man who does not know the difference between a party and a work possibly lead the government? Because he's going for the incompetence defence again. I was too thick to know what was going on. I mean, even if you accept that, he still has to resign. It also means he lied to Parliament. He insists he didn't deliberately lie, but even if you believe that, the ministerial code demands that he correct the record in the House. That means he has to go to Parliament at the earliest opportunity explain that what he said in the past was incorrect, you have to explain what you got wrong, and then give a factual account of events as required by MPs. He hasn't done this, he won't be doing it in the future. So even if you believe he really is that thick and thought it was all fine, he is still required to resign by the terms of the ministerial code that he personally approved. And speaking of what people believe, I could not believe a poll I saw. 75% believe that Boris Johnson knowingly lied about breaching COVID-19 rules. I mean, let's leave the 25% out of it. Because apart from anything else, quite a lot of those could be ones who just haven't followed the story and, and just clicked don't know. Don't assume that that's people going, oh yeah, he hadn't deliberately lied though, blinkered. Some of them will be, but bear in mind, some of them will be don't knows. And fair enough, if you haven't been following the story, it's, it's actually fine to say, do you know what, on this particular issue, I don't know. It's, it's good to know that you don't have enough information to form an opinion. Some of them will just be blinded by tribalism. But 75% of people believe that Boris Johnson deliberately lied about this matter. But only 57% believe he should quit. Now, you would think all of those 57% also believe that he deliberately lied. It's not certain. It is conceivable that some believe he was too thick to know the truth, that he didn't deliberately lie, but he should still resign, because as I say, there are reasons for that. But what it means is that at least 18% at least of people believe that he lied, but still think he should remain Prime Minister. That is appalling to me. That is a lot of people. That is a shocking indictment of British politics right now. Such a poll result would have been inconceivable a few years ago. Prime Minister breaks the law. Well, they've got to go then, haven't they? Yes, of course they do. In fact, the poll would never have been held because a Prime Minister being officially found guilty of a crime, no matter how minor, and this was not minor, would have resigned before the day was out. There are several reasons why Johnson should resign here. One, he broke the law. A Minister of the Crown found to have broken the law, should resign. Certainly the Prime Minister. The question of whether it's okay to break it and pay your dues previously and then become a minister, that's a different matter. But if you make the laws and then break them in office, you should resign the office. Right. 
I do get someone might at some point in their life get a fine for say speeding or even breaking COVID laws. And I don't want to make out that they're minor law breaking, they're not. But they may get that and then later on they may enter politics. They've paid their dues. They can claim they've learned their lesson and they're repentant and everyone deserves another chance unless you've got good reason to believe that they're not really repentant. And that's okay, you're giving them another chance. They've said they're, they're sorry about it, fine. As long as they behave themselves from then on, what's the problem? But when you actually break the law in office, they shouldn't remain under any circumstances. They should resign. Now, if they want to do a bit of penance, if they want to sort of go away, do something else, re-enter politics later on after they've rethought their values, fine, we'll accept that they've learned the lesson. I'll always accept repentance unless I've got very strong reason to believe that they're lying. But this is not. Second, he lied to Parliament. He's refused every step of the way to correct the record and apologise, which means he's it is deliberate because he refuses to come to Parliament and actually say what really happened. Third, he lied to the public and refused to come clean or apologise. Remember, Rishi Sunak has apologised, although the apology is not worth much when he won't actually resign. And of course he can't resign. Because if he resigns over this, like he can resign over a number of things and it's fine for Johnson. He resigns over this, people will be saying, well, why not Boris Johnson then? But Boris Johnson hasn't even apologised. Four, he's weakened his own law. People can now use Partygate as a defence against their own breach of the same law. Yes, as I've said, some were issued with fines and shouldn't have been. The law kept changing and often it was only published a few minutes before it went live. It didn't give police enough time to make sure officers were trained in its application. It's inevitable that some would have applied it incorrectly. But some people may successfully use Partygate as an excuse because if Johnson can carry out the quite breathtaking scale of rules breaking that he did and maybe only get a 20 or 50 pound fine because no one believes it's more than that, then certainly others should not be getting fines running into the thousands. And five, if a man does not realise that a birthday party or any of these other drunken orgies is a party, then I can think of very few jobs that they are fit for, but they are most certainly not fit to be a member of the government, much less the head of a government who decides every single appointment to that government. As for the Conservative Party, they now have a criminal as a leader. Not hyperbole, not even reasonable suspicion. Fact, he is a criminal. He is not challenging this in court, so he accepts that he is a criminal. The Conservative Party, by keeping him in place, also accept that they have a criminal in charge of both their government and the Treasury, and do you know what? They're cool with it. The two highest officers in the land are occupied by crooks, and the Conservatives are comfortable with this. This should hurt them very badly. I suspect they know this. And because there are still more parties to be investigated, some of which Johnson is also believed to have attended, this isn't over yet. And when it is all over, there will still be the Sue Gray report to deal with. The way this is playing out now, it is going to keep popping up in the news. Any Tory MP who think they should never have thought that this issue would die down regardless. But any Tory MP who thinks the issue will just go away must be as thick as mince. This is going to be, not only is it not going to go away, this is going to be the defining event of Boris Johnson's time in office. He now actually might have to eat a baby live on television to make this not the defining feature of his time in office. You know, they like to call themselves the party of law and order. It was always crap. They are the party that cut police numbers by tens of thousands, closed hundreds of police stations. They've closed courts down, meaning a huge backlog of cases that has built up. And that was before COVID. They now have two official criminals in charge of their party and their government, whilst the main opposition party has a distinguished former prosecutor leading them. I do not think they are going to win the law and order argument come the next election, do you? Even for all their expensive propaganda, mainstream media support and arrant bullshit, how many swing voters are really going to vote for a party led by criminals? But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.